Well, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am actually going to show you how I conduct an actual loan signing. And it, this is not technically a mock signing, but this is going to show you how I organize my table, how I set up the signers, and how I conduct the signing to stay very organized, to make sure that I'm very efficient and I get this done fast and in an error-free manner and everybody does what they need to do. So most of the times when I enter into someone's house, I kind of look around and try to understand what kind of space I might have available for the signing. If I know that they have access to a kitchen table or an island, I insist or politely insist that we sit at the table and we have uh, the centerpieces moved away and just have a little bit more space because I let them know that I have a lot of documents and we are going to have a lot of, we are going to need a lot of space to spread out and mostly they are okay with that. Sometimes when I go to somebody's house, they want us to sit at the coffee table um, and I have to explain to them that if, I, if they do have access to a kitchen table, that I would prefer to sit at the kitchen table because we have a lot of documents to sign and everyone's going to have kind of like a backache by the end of the signing if we are hunched over the coffee table. Now once I have identified the area where we are going to sit, I make sure that if it's a rectangular table, then I sit at the head of the table and I have one signer sit to my left and one signer sit to my right. And if that's not possible, I will sit on one side of the table and I will have both the signers sit to the opposite side of the table. What I don't want to do is if I'm sitting at the head of the table, I don't want one signer to the left of me and then one signer up ahead over further from them because then I cannot reach them or they cannot see the documents when I'm trying to explain those documents. So I do try to make sure that I point to where I want the signers to sit and that way they are seated exactly where they need to be seated for a very efficient signing. Another tip I have is sometimes the signers will think that they can share a pen well, technically that's sweet, but if we are sharing pens, then we are waiting on each other to sign. And I very politely tell them that I have an extra pen for them. I hand them an extra pen and I tell them that this is so that we are not waiting on each other to sign and we can keep a flow going. The idea is to have a flow going. So the documents should always be moving in a clockwise direction. If they stop moving, you are wasting time. And I understand sometimes you may have to take a break uh, to explain something in detail or to answer their questions or if they need to make a phone call to their lender or the title company. But most of the time, try to set the pace in the beginning of the signing. That way you can keep it going throughout the signing and get your signing done faster and more efficiently. Also, please remember to make sure that you let the signers know that you're going to need their IDs before they sit down. And that way they don't have to get up in the middle of the signing. Now the first thing I need to do is start my journal entry. Now I don't use the typical one line per entry journal. I use um, this journal which is um, a multiple entry per page kind of journal. Like as you can see, I make one entry here. The, this is the information about the closing, the date and the time and location, the property address, then the address of the signers, their name, the type of identification I used and their signatures and then there's a list of documents here and then I just circle A for acknowledgement and J for jurat. This takes about five minutes per loan signing versus the 20 to 30 minutes that I used to spend per loan signing making every single journal entry which could be almost up to 30 entries per loan signing. Okay so the first step is to start your journal. You're going to take their IDs and you're going to start entering the information in your journal about the date of notarization, the date of the document, closing address, property address, the signer's name, their mailing address, yada yada, you know, the stuff that you need to enter in your journal. Once you're done with that, you pass your journal to them and you say, okay, please go ahead and sign your name here in the signer's column and then you pass it to the other person once they are done with that. So I put the journal here on my right hand side. Here are my documents. This is very important. This is to make my fingers sticky because without this, I cannot live my life another day as a signing agent. And then of course my stamp. 
so once i have the journal entry started and i have their signatures on the journal entry it is now time to start with the signing so i'll ask them are they ready to begin and most of the times there is a closing disclosure that is at the front of the package and i'll start with that and the document gets explained to both the signers. If they're in front of me, then I'll put it in the middle so they can both see. So the document gets explained to both the signers, and then I give it to the first signer, and I ask them to sign the document, and I show them the spot they need to sign. I make sure to remind them that if their signature on my journal doesn't match their driver's license exactly, that they need to sign their name exactly as printed on the loan documents. And then I tell them the date is 09, 07, 2021. I also make sure they write all four digits of the year. Uh, for some reason, we got into that habit in 2020, and I just want to keep it consistent. So I make sure that I let them know that they are going to sign their name exactly as printed on the loan documents and put the date in that format. Now, once the first signer has passed the document on to the second signer to sign, I start explaining the second document here in the middle, and then I pass that on. By then, this document has come back to me. I turn it over, and I put it face down on the left side of the main stack of documents. Documents. So at this point, I have two stacks. One is the stack face up of the unsigned documents and one is the face down stack of the signed documents. And here I collect the next one. This, gets, this one gets passed to the second signer. I start explaining the third document and then pass it to the signer number one. Then they pass it to the signer number two and it comes back to me and I put it face down on the left side. <clears throat> then there's another one face down on the left side then I pick it up from here of course I need my finger <laughs> pick it up from here face up explain it to the signer signer one signs it signer two signs it while I start another one signer one signs it this one comes back to me face down goes on the left and then this one comes back and goes to the left so I hope you understand the gist of it. I'm, I have one pile face up and one pile face down. These documents are signed. Now any moment when uh, the signers are taking a few extra minutes to look through the documents, what I do is I turn this pile over and you may not feel comfortable doing this if you are brand new because you want to be paying attention or maybe you have a million things running through your head. But once you have done a few signings, you'll get comfortable doing this. And I'm telling you, this is extremely important, not only to keep your signings error free, but also to save a lot of time after the signing, checking the documents. Say that they're taking a few extra minutes to look at some documents. I'll turn over these documents and I'll start checking these documents for any missed signatures, any missed errors, initials, or any errors. And at this point, I put this stack to the left, all the way to the left. So basically at this point, I have one stack here face up of unsigned documents, one stack here face down of signed documents, and then this is another stack face down of documents that have been error checked. So now if you're gonna get confused about this, please skip this step, but once you get used to these documents, you may include this step in your um, notarizations. And if there is not enough space on the table, what I usually have is I put the big, huge FedEx envelope in which I'm gonna ship back the documents on the floor right next to me. And then I drop these documents face down on top of that FedEx envelope. So then this keeps going, we continue through the process and then as they are looking through some documents some more time, I'm checking these documents. So by the time I'm done signing all these documents, they have already been double checked and now all I'm doing is finishing up this and then at the end, I'm just double checking these documents and these are done. And that's it. Now, I don't have to take any extra time of the signers to say I need to go and check. Sometimes I'll do that if I feel that I may have missed something and <coughs> if I have kind of like a feeling that I want to look through them the third time. But most of the time, the, the, the two checks are, are enough. And at that point, I'm ready to take these documents. I pack them in my FedEx envelope. If I need to scan them, I leave the envelope unsealed. But if I don't need to scan them, I will seal the envelope. And that's it. I collect all my stuff. 
and I pack up and I say thank you so much. Have a good day. Hey, if you're a new Texas notary, I would like to let you know that Martin, who I interviewed on this channel not too long ago, is holding a training um, in New Braunfels. This is going to be a live in-person jam-packed one day of training. And in this training, you will learn about what you're allowed to do, what you're prohibited to do as a Texas notary. You will learn about the rules and regulations of Texas notaries. You will learn about loan documents. You will learn about about the loan signing agent business this is going to be a great opportunity it's not only an opportunity to, to learn from Martin and be able to ask questions directly um, in the class and also interact and network with the notaries in your area and hey I'll be there too so please don't forget to say hi if you're interested please go ahead and sign up Martin does try to keep the class size limited so please don't miss out the link is in description.